everybody. This is the Knight's Tale Podcast, where we discuss the tips, tools, tactics, and mindsets required for veterans to have a successful transition out of the military. Thanks for listening. Today's guest is Landis Fouts, and today he's going to talk about his perspective uh, from being in the U.S. Navy for eight years as an intel officer and what his mindset was like during his transition out of the military and what he thinks are some of the critical aspects of any veteran's transition. So Landis is currently working as an associate at Bank of America Merrill Lynch. And before that, he was a summer associate at Guggenheim Partners. And I thought it would be interesting to see how he navigated through the process of becoming um, a successful Wall Street banker coming from the U.S. Navy. Um, And I think it is a very inspirational story that a lot of people could get a lot of benefit out of. What I noticed about Landis is that he's really good at setting a goal and creating a clear strategy about accomplishing that goal. That sounds like a simple process in theory, but it takes a lot of diligence and persistence on his part. And that's something that I'm assuming um, had a lot to do with his success and where he is right now. And he's one of those people that just makes everything look easy. So I'm excited today to hear his perspective on his transition and um, I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, here's Landis Fowler. So uh, I was a Naval Intelligence Officer for eight years. Um, I had various assignments. I did my undergrad at GW uh, on a Rossi scholarship, ROTC. So I entered the Navy right after I graduated and uh, got out of the Navy in July 2015. Nice, nice. And like, and then you went right into school after that, right? Or you did a master's program and you, you got to right. travel abroad? So, yeah, so I, I got out um, in the summer of 2015, left the Navy, and then spent several months. Uh, you know, my, my school began January 2016. So I had, you know, five or six months to, to just travel around. So I took that opportunity, traveled around Europe travel around the U.S., seeing old friends and family, um, kind of uh, work on my plan for, you know, how I was going to do school and what I was going to do after. Uh, and then, yeah, January of 2016, uh, started school in, uh, in Madrid, Masters of Finance. Wow. Nice. And how was the program? Like, was it, was it fun or was it difficult? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, um, I no regrets about it. I had actually imagined that I was going to combine, like, vacation and school right um it ended up being a lot more intensive than i expected so a whole lot less of the vacation aspect and a lot more of the academic side but you know the objective of learning a lot and getting prepared for the finance industry you know that that was achieved oh yeah that's that's awesome so um what was your thought process when you were getting out or when you were making that transition from from school to working full-time were you a little nervous or were you just kind of like all over the place or were you just like, I know I want to go in finance. I know I want to work in this uh, division of finance. What, what were your thoughts like? Yeah. So, I mean, there was, there was definitely anxiety, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and I had a lot of friends who were in the same situation at the time, uh, not just prior military guys, but also people that went through my, my program in Spain um, who were on the job hunt. Um, anytime you're looking for a job and don't have one, there is some anxiety involved in that. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I knew I wanted to go into the finance industry. Um, I had narrowed down kind of what I wanted to do within that into a couple of different uh, areas. But I, I wasn't – I didn't have, I would say, like a, a set spot that I was targeting within finance. I just knew it was a very broad industry. Um, I had done a summer internship at Guggenheim, um, like you did. Yeah, and uh, I had a good experience there. That was not a placement program; it was just uh, an opportunity to, to to see the industry. But uh, I definitely liked um, the investment banking side, project finance, anything with modeling. Um, but you know, I also liked uh, you know just you know, project management pieces as well, and uh, uh, just dealing with smart people. It's something you can do in other industries too, but uh, especially in finance, we work with a lot of complex issues, and I like the challenge. So there were a lot of places to look. Uh, fortunately, as a guy getting out of the military, um, even though I had been out for about a year and a half, uh, by, by the point that I was looking for a full-time job, uh, there's still veteran, you know, 
I found veteran placement programs that were available. So right. Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, uh, Bank of America uh, was the three that I had really targeted. And what I liked about each of those is that, and especially Bank of America, is that they had functional aspects to them where you could spend time in different areas of the bank. Right. And uh, Bank of America was, you know, I felt the best organized and uh, uh, had the rotations uh, in, in spots that really appealed to me. So, um, I applied, well, I applied for all three, and uh, I, I got Bank of America. So that was my top choice. Oh, that, that's awesome. And how many people were in your uh, your vet class? There were 10 of us. Oh, okay. So it was, it was pretty, uh, and it was a pretty... Pretty small. Yeah, a pretty small class, but I'm sure it was really, um, really, really competitive. Yeah, indeed. That, also, all the veteran programs are, and I remember I had actually applied for, um, even at the beginning of my finance program, um, I, when I was looking for summer internships, I had applied for some veteran programs, and I had underestimated at the time just how competitive these things were. Um, you know, I was, I was fortunate to get into the Guggenheim program. Same. Um, but going through that process really opened my eyes into what kind of competition is out there. So I think I was better prepared for the uh, the applications for full-time uh, programs. So, I mean, and, and just, just as an example, the Bank of America program had, at least my intake, had 500 applicants. Uh, only 30 or so were selected to come to Super Day, which is the, the uh, where we come to the bank and uh, get to network a bit and then have interviews. Of those 30 people that came to Super Day, only 10 of us uh, were were selected to enter the program. Uh, so I was I was really lucky to get there, um, just you know, just be accepted. Uh, even to get to Super Day, I was very very fortunate to to, get, to make it that far. Yeah. Um, I would say you know not only interviewing elsewhere prepared me uh, to succeed there, but also, being out of the Navy for a little while, having gone through a finance program, uh, gave me a lot of the confidence and at least technical jargon that I needed to, you know, feel confident in interviews and, uh, you know, and kind of project this image that I could succeed in those roles. Yeah. Um, that, that makes a lot so, of sense. Like, because when I was transitioning, it always, well, it, it kind of felt like, um, people were kind of speaking another language in a sense, like um, yeah. certain certain words. And I was just like, wait, what? It would be intimidating. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think uh, that's, that's cool that you recognize that. And you kind of attribute, I guess, the, the beginning of that process to the Guggenheim experience. I think, um, I think Charles and, and Stephen and Kate are doing a really good job in running that, that uh, Veterans Transition Assistance Program. Right. It's pretty pretty good experience for me too, and, and a few other a few of my other friends. And I see that you have some some certifications, like some some finance certifications, right? The Series Seven and um, sixty three. Is that yeah, right? so I have my my license exams, right? My, what's called your FINRA licenses. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's not something you can really get prior to coming to the firm. My Series 7 and 63 were required for the job that I ended up uh, uh, getting selected to, which um, I, I work in the, the equities asset management space. Uh, we sell cash management products in institutions, specifically escrow, uh, custodian services, and issuer paying agent. Um, but actually, in order to work under the equity sales space, you generally have to have those two licenses, Series 7 and, and 63. Um, okay. There are other licenses in the financial services industry as well. Um, it's different based on, on what job you do. But the other common ones are, well, the, the Series 53, which is, a, which is for the investment banking side. Anything on the origination, I would involve that. And then there's other ones for, you know, munis, or municipal, you know, municipal securities, um, and uh, – commodities options so that was a requirement yeah oh, okay yeah did it take you a yeah. while to study up for those tests uh yeah i would it, it did and um you know people will have different experiences with this um, because of the program i came in through mm -hmm. uh, we ended up being 
grouped with other it's new uh new hires right so my my internship period it was an off cycle internship so it ended in you know began in march ended at the end of may uh and then started working full time in june well i left my desk july and august to go to new hire training right so most of the people in new hire it's for all analysts and associates that are new hires um and those aren't people who just were working in one area of the bank and then started working in another spot of the bank. Now, these were people who just got out of MBAs and undergrads and our program and who had come into the bank. So during that program is when they, they, they program, you know, they schedule time for you to study and to take the test. And then you return to your desk after you've taken the test. Um, there are, there, and it doesn't always work out that way. Um, even within that program, there were some people that needed more time. So they returned to their desks and just kind of studied on their own, and they took the test when they were ready. Um, I, they have, you know, a certain amount of time allotted. They can they can go without uh, taking the test. Yeah, you know, I think it's like you know, an extra, extra three or four months, but they have to work around that time. Uh, I guess my, my point is that generally, especially as a new hire, that time will be scheduled in for you, but um, it might not be. Right, you might come in as a uh, into a full time role and just be told, okay, you need to get your Series Seven test, and there's not time allotted for you to do that necessarily. You have to do that on your nights and weekends. Wow. Yeah. So it depends. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, do, do you think there were some skills, like some really um, important skills that you leveraged from the military to to kind of get you where you are today? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I really appreciated the kind of skills that I had developed during the military, uh, or at least noticed, um, until I, I began working full time. And so I, I think what really stands out, and uh, these are important things that come up during interviews when you're asked, okay, you know, what does your prior experience bring to the table? Because a lot of people out there don't know what the military is. You know, they watch movies you know, full metal jacket and some other ones. And they think that, you know, you spent your four years or your eight years in the military uh, getting yelled at and doing push-ups all day, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when in fact, you know, it's, it's, most people anyways, it's not like that at all. Um, you know, and, and everyone's military experience is different, but I think one of the things we all have in common is that uh, the way the military is structured, the way, that, the way it's structured is that, uh, and, and kind of the culture across branches is that um, there is a, a, a very keen focus on individual accountability, right, and attention to detail and adherence to, uh, you know, to procedures. Right. Uh, right. But not only that, but initiative is highly valued in the military as well. So, you know, and th these are things that I've only, I've only been working full time for, for a year now. And these are all things that I, I think of throughout my day as I encounter other, other people in the bank uh, or problems. And I think in the military, we would have addressed it this way and it would have been easier. Now, there are a lot of things, you know, a lot of headaches that you don't deal with um, that we dealt with in the military, but that's another story. Um, you know, you want to focus on, and I think the important thing is is knowing the strength that you developed from the military, which is um, identifying problems, getting to the objectives, um, you know, within legal constraints, uh, bringing people on board to fix that problem, leveraging other uh, spots within the organization to, to bring tools to bear, and uh, and then just kind of sticking with it. You know, as as I was. Uh, I remember when I was first looking for a role and uh, I was networking, talked to a guy who was a veteran. Um, he used the word I kind of like. And he said, w one of the things we bring to the table is intuitiveness, right? Right. You're, you're given a task and you, because of the way that we were kind of uh, trained in the military, uh, we stick to that task until completion, right? You'll seek out help if needed. Uh, you'll Google how to fix the problem. But um, ultimately, you know, as our role in the military is usually, uh, this is usually the case, is that you're given a problem, you need to solve it. The end. Yeah. <laughs> right. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, you dropped some jewels right there. Um, you think I hope. 
Um, what, what do you think are some critical things um, or critical, critical skills or critical mindsets that you need to have when you're getting out? Um, well, you know, I, I think if you've already made the decision to get out, it's a little late to develop a new skill. Uh, but, you know, hopefully you will have developed this, you know, that common set of skills from the military that most people do during their service. Um, I would say, you know, before you even make the decision to put in your resignation letter or, you know, not re-enlist, uh, you know, be smart about the plan. I know this is kind of easier said than done, but... Uh, have an idea of what you would rather do. Because for most people, the military experience is, is not bad, right? Yeah. Even, if it's, even if you don't enjoy it, uh, or, you know, or if it's not your dream job, it's, it's actually not a bad setup, right? It's, you know, the pay is pretty decent. There is generally a, 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 from, you know, a very visible, transparent promotion path. Right, and there are a lot of benefits on the table. So think hard before you walk away from that. Um, but you know, when you have made the decision that hey, okay, I don't like this, and make it out. Uh, think of what it is that you'd rather do on the outside. And if you can't think of one or two or you know even four different potential paths, then uh, and, and that's okay. That's, that's totally fine. Um, but if you if you can't, uh, then really consider going back to school you know, uh, as, a, as a place to, to not only learn new skills, but to, to think of opportunities you know, to pursue afterwards. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so like outside of work, um, Landis, uh, like how do you uh, usually spend your, you know, your weekends or, or your nights? Do you have any pets or anything? <laughs> uh, well, I'm kind of boring right now. So uh, I am actually spending a lot of time at the moment studying for the CFA, the Charter Financial Analyst exam. Nice. So uh, I don't know if most listeners would be familiar with this. The, the CFA is the industry standard uh, certification uh, for finance. So it's, it's a series of three different exams. Uh, they're, they're offered once a year, yep. and they're incredibly difficult. So I, I actually did – exam number one during business school. Uh, I was eligible to take exam two last summer, but I had just come in through my, uh, my internship. I had no time to study. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that this year. Oh. Anyways, I'm studying for that. Um, wow. And um, it's, you know, not, not cheap, and it's only taught once a year, so I kind of have to take that seriously. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Um, and it, good luck. I'm sure you don't really need luck, you know, when it comes to that. But, uh, but yeah, I definitely wish you the best with that. Um, Thanks. Yeah, man, I just want to uh, thank you for being on on the podcast, and um, I definitely want you to enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, man, I, I just really appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me, Robert. All right. No problem. Thank you.